My Jiu Jitsu Journey, week seven. Coming at you. After taking 15 day break, it seems like. Let's see, I hurt myself on a Friday, so I couldn't go Saturday. And then I didn't go the next week, so that was eight days. And then it's been seven days since then. So 15 days I haven't done jujitsu. And man, is that a perishable skill. Especially this early in the game. I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. I feel like I'm just going into the unknown again. I just killed all that momentum that I had from last week. So real fast I'm gonna stop at the gas station a different gas station and I'm gonna buy some gum and make sure I pay for it I have more than just change this time we should be good to go I don't even know what to what to do to prepare it's been so long what's jujitsu I'm nervous again I got all nervous again but I'm excited man this is like uh, good. it's been a while like you ever feel useless and then you go do something and you lose that feeling of uselessness that's what I'm doing right now Feel like I've been useless for the last 15 days. I can go earn some of that back, you feel me? Woo, okay. Good to go. Here we go. I got about a 35 minute drive ahead of me. Let's get it. Okay, I'm pulling up. Here it goes. Here it goes, I only got about an hour and 25 minutes now that I think about it. Just put on my gum. Remember to try to breathe. Let's do it. Today, you're gonna end up super confused because <laughs> uh, legs are very complicated but when you learn them you learn them I don't think they're complicated anymore but at first I did think they were complicated I'll kind of show you the beauty of legs the quick summary on legs okay so check this out ah, no, no. so here's your leg okay you have one bone here you have two here do you know that so one and two so what I want to do in order to manipulate your leg is I want to take these two and I want to treat them like a rolling pin. And all I want to do is I just want to twist. I just want to twist. Okay. So you'll notice with your knee being able to move around, you're okay. So what I want to do in order to really manipulate your leg is I want to get like this to where I'm controlling oh, you. I can't so see, knee. now you see the difference? Oh, yeah. Okay. So here's how I would go after legs. I usually start from what I call like a scoop position. Okay. You're rolling with someone and look, here you are. You're okay. trying to keep me away with that. So this is a scoop position, very strong position. Now I have choices to enter in what's called a, uh, some people call it a 411. Actually means leg entanglement. So it's okay. no big deal. Okay. You don't need to know that. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go what's called a straight ashi. Straight represents this. Your leg is straight across my regardless of what i'm doing with this look this is straight ashi right and then cross ashi is here there oh, are okay. variations but let's say that these are jaws top jaw bottom jaw i'm clamping on your leg right yeah. or this is the fang of like a cobra or something okay the overbite is the leg closest okay. to you that avoids confusion because a lot of times you'll you'll go to get into this ashi position and you'll be like this oh, I see what you mean. and this doesn't work right now the truth is you you'd actually just turn on me and get it on me what is the cross? The cross represents your leg going across mine. Right. And then the straight ashi is a straight entry. So this is the most basic. How do you get into the most basic? Watch this. You grab their leg and you jump into position. You just, you just go right here, just like this. And then what you do is you go here with your foot on the hip, your other one covers, and then you cover here so they can't turn out. Go to turn out. See how I can control right. your turn out. Right. Now what I'm doing is, I'm attacking you here. So the most basic attack is right here, a straight one and just a 
arch of my back until you tap. So it's just, just like that. Now, the next one I can do is I can get underneath of this like this, and I can start turning it that way. Okay, so this is the light stuff. And then you've got counter as well, but I'm gonna have you put on a straight ashi on you. Here's what's interesting. I don't like putting people in straight ashi. I don't like doing this attack, you know why? Because there's such powerful counters to this. So when you're here with a guy like me, you're a dead duck. I can tell, I mean, it feels ready. Well, let me show you what's gonna happen to you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab your foot right here because now I know where your foot is. Now watch this. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do, okay. Yeah, so it's called lens lock. So this is the first counter you'll, you'll learn. So actually you'll learn these submissions first. So be very, very cautious and I'll tell you why. I, I didn't tell you something very important. One bone here, two here. When you twist them, guess, guess what happens? Guess where the, the place is that's most susceptible to injury? Me? Yes. See, most people wouldn't think that. Well, I tore my ACL. Ah, yeah, so that's it. So what you're doing is these tendons attach right here and you're pulling them. So when we're training together, do not resist because here's when you know you went too far. You pulled your ACL. <laughs> It'll snap. Right. Yeah, so people get injured all the time because they want to be cool. They don't want to tap. They're like, when you're in a leg thing, man, just tap. This is extremely dangerous. What they call it in jujitsu, one of many references is the dark art. Oh, really? You don't like the sound of that, do you? <laughs> yeah. So here we are, now you want you to start just like this. So you just got to get this fast and just like this, and then it, it'll nice just become nice second nature to you. You good. Fall. Other side. You good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Try to take me down right away. At the end, you can take me down. You're good. Yep. Yeah. And see, you're accidentally taking me down, but look, yeah. that's okay. But look, now grab hold of it. Yeah, straight ashy. Okay, you got to finish. Tap. <laughs> See how fast that is? And that's a nice strong finish. Just start pulling. Um, and it was such, it was so good to be back. You learned so much. Jiu Jitsu teaches you so much new stuff that really opens your eyes. But it all points back to the same main theme, which is your martial arts literacy. You're dumb. As far as martial arts literacy goes, you're an idiot. Every time I learn something new, it highlights how dumb I am about something else, right? Like every time I learn something new, it magnifies in contrast how much I don't know. It's such a mind trip. It really is some weird psychology involved in jujitsu. But it's great that I get to roll with a guy like Matt. Today we went over leg locks, ankle locks, and bro, when I tell you that there is nothing scarier than leg locks, it's, I don't think you will be able to comprehend how powerful that statement is. Legs are, it's the surgery of jiu-jitsu. The thing about legs is you want to be a surgeon to do it. Otherwise, you'll hurt somebody, even in practice. Leg, the, the risk of injury practicing leg locks is greater than anything else. But the reward is so acute there's some things that you know they're dangerous to practice but if you get them it's a good thing to have and sometimes i look at those like they're not worth it sure you want to be well-rounded but you're like what is the risk reward here you know with leg locks you cannot ignore or neglect acquiring the use of leg locks. It's a must. It's an absolute must, especially for self-defense. The only people who can defend leg locks are other jujitsu players.
Some Joe Schmo, John Q. Public. He's not defending a leg lock. Soon as you lock in that leg, he's done. And the thing is with jujitsu guys, as soon as you lock in that leg, you sink it. They could still get out, but it's very risky. So to practice with people, you have to trust them and they have to know what they're doing. The problem is I don't know what I'm doing. So Matt is taking huge risks. He's also taking into consideration the context around knowing me, knowing my level, knowing my capabilities to where he's going to tap either early because he knows that I may fall back, plant my shoulder and just snap his leg so he's going to tap early, or to know that I don't understand that I don't have him sunk yet. And so when I pogo stick my elbow and drop my shoulder, it's not going to break because there was like, dude, he's just, he's really fantastic, man. It's really cool being around this guy because I love when people are awesome. You guys have heard me say that before. I just love when people are doing awesome things. And first of all, not only this guy sharing his time with me, I'm sure he gets a benefit because he teaches me and you learn when you teach. But let's be honest, like he's making time for me. This dude's super busy. He's got a lot going on. He's a wealthier man. He's got a lot of business to manage. And he's fantastic at jiu-jitsu. And he could just roll with big, with bad to the bone, top of the line, creme de la creme dudes and get better. But he decides that he's going to take time with me. It's amazing. So anyway, I learned a lot today. Today was a great experience. I'm glad that I got back to it. I, there's nothing I can do about those two weeks that I lost. But I have a dummy now. And I got a new piece of equipment that came in. It's a inversion strap for my back where I can hang it from my TRX and I can stretch my back like an, like an inversion table. So I have that. I'm going to do a video about unboxing that and trying to use it. Um, but I can start stretching my back. I got to look into that stuff and then start rolling with the dummy. So it was a blast. I'm glad you guys watched. Uh, I learned a lot, learned a ton, and I'm so grateful. So, until the next time, aloha.